can uh, join the resistance, of course, you can get on Platform Plus. Well, you can just download the app at the App Store or Google, the platform. Easy to use, easy to download. It literally takes less than a minute, I think. And then you go on Platform Plus and you get a few extras when you're on Platform Plus. And as time goes on, you'll get more and more extras and more and more ways to listen to us more conveniently, um, which is great. Now, Linda, thank you for your text. Sean, we love you, but we also love Ben. No hard feelings. How are you getting on with the new pro mo, the Mitre 10 ad inspired? Linda, we are awful lot on, be very, been very busy. I've got to admit too, um, we were talking a few days ago, should you make people stay at work in a natural disaster? The last couple of days, I've said to people, work from home if you want to. Some of them have, some of them haven't, some of them didn't get the message. Um, but we got through it. It's been pretty busy. Uh, it has been pretty busy. Now look, the next issue, uh, the next issue is one that I, I, look, I wondered about, about running and getting into. Someone had sent me a, an ad for Ranui Public Library, which is in Auckland, and a concerned punter, I think would be what I call it, said, here is an ad for, like, Gay Pride Week or Day, um, and it was advertising story reading for kids, and I think we're talking primary school-aged kids here, at Ranui Public Library that they were going to have this story time reading all about Pride Week and it would be, I guess, drag queens. I don't know, you used to call them transvestites or clinger from MASH. Uh, blokes who dress up in kind of a parody of, uh, they dress up as showgirls. I think that's what drag queens are. I'm not sure of the, uh, the rules of this particular subculture. But blokes dressed up as Sheila's in fishnet stockings with big hair and, I don't know, big boobies or fake boobies or whatever. And it's a bit of a thing, okay? And there's nothing wrong with it. It's relatively harmless. Personally, not my thing. But there seems to be, seems to be, a thing about, particularly with councils at the moment, that drag queens, for some reason, need some special recognition in our world, in our life. And I noted the uh, local government, New Zealand or Wellington City Council, and it's encouraging people to vote thing, use drag queens. I have no idea why. I have no idea if voter turnout amongst blokes who dressed up as Sheila's was low and they had to do that. But it's all about being woke, isn't it? It's about all about being cool and, and diverse. And I looked at this, and this person who had sent me this ad for Ranui Library uh, and the Drag Queen Storytime for Kids was a little concerned and said, what is this about? And I sat there and I wondered what it was about. Uh, we haven't had any engagement, have we, from Auckland City Council or Ranui Public Library as to what the hell this is about. And I think the only question is, is it appropriate? And would you, as a parent, take your kid along to a drag time story time? And I see plenty on the internet that this is a seems to be a strategy that the LGBTQI or whatever other letters community is involved in all around the world that you get kids and you get drag queens and transsexuals or transvestites into schools. And for some reason that's cool or acceptable. And I don't know, I want to take the public's temperature on that. And a group that is involved in these issues and involved in pointing out and sometimes the pitfalls of the wonderful world of inclusion is a group called Speak Up For Woman and she's been on the programme before she rejoins us now. Suzanne Levy from Speak Up For Woman is with us now. Uh, Suzanne, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks, Sean. How are you this morning? Good, thank you. This this cross-dressing people reading to kids seems to be a thing. Am I wrong? Uh, no, no, you're not wrong. It, it is a thing, and it's it's rather perplexing as to why it's a thing, to be honest. It's um, why has the rainbow community chosen uh, drag queens as the sort of representative, inclusive diverse um, group to, to represent them in there in reading stories in, in libraries. So um, the people sort of say, you know, why not? I, I sort of say, well, why? Why? why, why? Yeah. yeah. And it, is this it, just in New Zealand, Suzanne? Is this just in New Zealand? No. No, no, definitely not. It's definitely a, a trend that um, you could say has sort of we've inherited from um, the U.S., in the UK and in the in the US, you know, you see all sorts of more disturbing um, instances of of uh, parties and children's sort of events with drag queens, and uh, some of it looks pretty 
pretty inappropriate. I mean, the thing with drag queens is, um, I'm a lesbian, I spend lots of time in gay events and things, and drag, I, I quite enjoy a drag show. They're quite, yeah. they're, they're pretty funny. But they're an adult thing, and that's what's kind of funny about them. They're sex, it's sexualised entertainment. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, at the same time, it, it, you could say it's, it's um, derogatory towards women um, in the way that they're portrayed as sort of, you know, over, yeah. overly portrayed. Um, yeah. You know. um, but in an, in an adult, um, in, in some... Context, adult, it's like a burlesque. Situation. It's like a burlesque, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's got a, there's kind of a, a time and place. Um, so, no, why why the community has kind of seen that these uh, these guys are a, a representative is, is quite beyond me, really. I don't quite understand it. You know, there are... Um, if, you, if you're talking to, to children and wanting them um, to understand about being inclusive um, and embracing diversity, there are lots of other ways you can do that. You could have, um, you know, if they want to understand about children having two mums and two dads and that kind of thing, um, you know, why not have a, have a, a gay man read? Um, not dressed as a woman. But to be brutally frank, what do the sexual proclivities or... or I, and I'm just going to say that dressing up as a Sheila and as a drag queen is not mainstream. There are norms in society and that is not a norm. I'm not no, saying not an offensive norm, that it's, it's not an a norm. Adult. But what the hell has that got to do with reading children stories to kids? I don't, honestly don't know. I think um, if... You know, the library people will say that the kids, the kids love it. Kids love all sorts of things. Um, but it's, it seems to me that it's kind of breaking down a, a, a boundary or barrier between adult entertainment and children's entertainment, which are two very, very different things. And, you know, drag queens, are, they are adult entertainment. They're, they're not... It's not pantomime, which was a family-based kind of entertainment. Yeah, it's all like, almost it's, like saying, well, we're going to have some strippers read stories to well, kids, yeah, yeah. just to show that there's acceptance of strippers. But that's not yeah, what or, kids' or story or time stars, is for. No. It is for the entertainment of children, not the creation of a more diverse society. It's almost like using the children. You could say that, yeah. It, do, it does feel, it's very confusing as to why. Why um, those, yeah. those people have been chosen. As, Are you aware as, of this Ra Nui uh, Library thing? Oh, uh, vaguely. Yeah, I've yeah. Been, I mean, I've caught it on the hop with all of this, but um, yeah. Yeah, there, there are things uh, popping up like that all the time, though. The Ranui one is not a new, yeah. new, um, new and thing. And we go back, I, I think, to a Pride uh, a pride parade a few years ago where Vodafone had a bouncy castle with the big rubber balls, and they said, hey, kids, go balls deep with Bo Vodafone, and they thought that was cool and inclusive. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's I guess kids are, in a way are being used to sort of blur the blur the boundaries because they're, they're unaware, you know. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, I mean we've we've always sort of done that sort of thing. If you go to kids' movies as an adult yeah. um, with kids, um, presumably, um, there's always little little jokes and digs that are there for the adults that will go over the kids' heads, uh, and that's that's fine. But this is different than that. This is this is adult men dressed as a parody of women, what are children supposed to think? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an admission to you, Susan. Uh, I grew up, for various reasons, uh, largely because my mother was single in a very bohemian setting. And I yep. can remember it would have been year seven, I think Prima Four, the, the, the year before I went to Form One or Intermediate, what would oh, have yeah. been Intermediate then. Um, and I can remember on a number of occasions being taken with my brother and sister to a nightclub in Vivian Street and meeting, and meeting, getting free Coca-Cola or Fanta, right, and meeting this big lady with lots of hair who had this surprisingly deep voice. Um, as my mother and her boyfriend would talk and, and do adult things and we'd be at the back of uh, one of Carmen's nightclubs. Mm -hmm. And the woman with the deep voice was Carmen. Now, I don't yeah. know if it did me any harm, but it certainly made me scratch my head. And I thought about those instances as a, as a pretty young child. And I'd look back and I can laugh about it and say how wonderful and bohemian and I knew Carmen, or Trevor Rupe as his real name was. 
Um, but I think that was my mother's choice. Um, and yeah, she did yeah. that completely openly. And I don't know if she thinks in retrospect it was a good thing or a bad thing. I don't think it damaged me. And it's a good yarn to tell. But the issue is whether or not it's... Um, whether or not I would have as a kid felt more confused had I gone along or had a teacher who invited a drag queen into the, you know, into our classroom to read to us. And I think it would have been a completely different thing. And I guess what we've got to do, Suzanne, is ask parents and ask New Zealand what they think of it. Uh, that, well, that that's, would be really interesting to hear. Um, yeah. to people, I'd be interested to know why people think it's happening, like what, yeah. the, what they think the benefits, benefits are. Um, if, it's, if they think that it's promoting um, or get, getting children to be inclusive of transgender people, drag, drag queens aren't transgender, they're yeah. Gay men. And look, I'll be I honest, think, there is yeah. another accusation levelled around this that we might as well deal with, and that is there is some suggestion, and I'm going to be honest, particularly amongst the homophobic, that it is like grooming of children, or the whole idea for the community overall is that you want more kids to be gay or transsexual or non-binary, that it's actually a kind of propaganda or a brainwashing campaign against kids. I think it's it's blurring it's blurring the boundaries. It's um, the thing is that kids kids are either gay or lesbian or whatever. They're they're already they are yeah. they are what they are. And this is this is saying be who you be who you are. You know, um, but it's using adult men in a sexualized way to do that, and and that's that's sort of the issue. It's not age appropriate. Yeah, I hear you. I and hear you. Is yeah. That? It's a, it's an adult it's adult entertainment. It's sexualized. It's yeah. you know we we're, we're supposed to sort of um, filter what children under the age of sixteen are exposed to in terms of adult yeah. content. And is it suitable, especially if it's a school group? Um, you know, or quite quite young children. Yeah. What are they? Well, I must admit, I grew up in a background where outside of school, my mum didn't have much of a filter. I don't know. It's done me a lot of harm. Uh, but I look back and say maybe uh, 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 it was confusing. Uh, it just seems to me we're almost formalising. And what would you say to councils who are encouraging this sort of activity as part of their diversity and pride policies? I would say why? Why are you? Why is this your choice? Yeah, it's there are all sorts of diver diverse people out there. Yeah, that is a so really much, good question. Why not have people in wheelchairs? Why not have people in wheelchairs? Or blind people reading. Yeah. They're, they're real minorities yeah. with issues who do face discrimination. Suzanne, I thank you. Right. Look, I thank you for your kind of common sense. You're not outraged here. You're not screaming, oh, they're all pedophiles. I think that you've hit the right question. Why? What is the point? Yeah, why? Yeah. yeah. Suzanne, always good speaking with you. Thank you very much indeed. Suzanne Levy from Speak Up for Women. So why? Can you answer that question? Why are drag queens with the support of councils reading stories to kids? What is the point? Uh, we might try and get hold of Bob McCroskey, I think, from Family First, see what he thinks about it.